I would think the Saudis are not too pleased either about this. You know, um, is that is that fair to say? I mean, I I oh, am yeah. I'm very. I guess one of the things um, that I'm very curious about from where you sit is is the perceptions of Israel. Um, I know that President Trump also you know considered himself to be a strong supporter of Israel. Does it really matter who's in power? Um, with the current dynamic that we're seeing? Well, I mean, look, I think, you know, each one, Israel likes it when, when leaders in both countries say that they're friends of Israel. Um, so that's clear. I do think that they, on the Saudi issue, they've come around, uh, even though people say, ah, BB, he's close to the Republicans, you know, which I think is, you know, is true, but he's come around to a kind of an interesting kind of, you want to call it Nixon, Nixon goes to China moment mm -hmm. that he feels that if it's a Democrat who does a breakthrough with Riyadh, that is likely to win more of the political spectrum in a mm -hmm. way that if, you know, a Democrat went to China, it would not have. But a Democrat who goes to Saudi Arabia given all the question marks among, you know, part of the Democratic base, you know, he'll bring the Republican Party, but if he could bring some of the Democrats, that will make the difference, especially if they want something in Congress that requires two thirds of the Senate. It mm -hmm. might seem very ambitious, but I think they want to try. And so in, in this upside down world, in a weird way, you know, I think BB is very much rooting for President Biden. Like, you know, you're the guy who can pull this off. It's unclear that a Republican can pull it off, given what the Saudis want a treaty. If they didn't want two thirds, it wouldn't matter, maybe, but they do. And so it's 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 an unusual situation that, uh, you know, I, I mean, because the counter argument goes like this. Trump tells the Saudis, wait for me, wait till 2025. I'm coming, I'll give you a better deal than the Democrats. You know, we hear these kind of rumors. We don't know if they're true. You always want to be very cautious unless you know you can't say. Mm -hmm. But I think what's happened is from what we hear, the Saudi thinking has evolved to by saying is, wow, you know, a Democrat who could do this, that will give us a much wider berth than we would get otherwise. And so I think that they don't want to give up on Biden so quickly at, at this time. And ditto for Israel. Ditto. Um, you think it doesn't really matter to them who's in charge in Washington since we're heading well, into an election? No, I think on the Saudi thing, it does. Like I said, I think on other things, you know, they, you know, their look, their strength is in the U.S. Israel relationship has been this sense of bipartisanship. And they're worried when they hear that on the Democratic side that there are progressives that are not friendly to them, that that gets them nervous. And in certain ways, it heightens Biden's leverage because he's viewed as you don't want someone to be like he's the last Zionist, uh, you know, right. and he's, you know, of older school. So, you know, so long as he's president, I think Israel is, is more relaxed, but they wonder what will follow him and 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 that's why it's it's an unusual situation while that they count on this president to kind of bring his party together and they don't have the same fears i would say on the republican side so let me bring this back to end uh, to the domestic situation going on in israel right now is this sort of a piecemeal approach that the prime minister is taking will there be more that that you're watching for that on your radar, you'd put on ours? Right. Yeah, no, it's huge question that you're asking. We don't know the exact answer. The Knesset is going into a three month summer recess at the end of this week. So you got a lot of time for things to cool off, but we don't know if it will. Uh, and uh, like I said, we don't know the courts will rule, uh, you know, so, but your point is the right one, which is, okay, let's assume, what about if the Knesset reconvenes in the fall? is Justice Minister Levine, does he got more to go here mm -hmm. to weaken, you know, the judiciary's independence? And I think he does. And, and here it gets back to the prime minister, leadership, leadership, leadership counts. You know, if, if he'd say enough already, enough, you know, I want to go on to the stuff I care about, which is stopping the Iranian nuclear bomb, 
and I'm seeing if a breakthrough with Saudi Arabia is possible. Those are my two kind of regional, you know, agenda items that I yeah. really want to pursue. That's my legacy. That's my vision. And all this stuff is a distraction. So is he able to get a grip as the leader of his party to say enough? OK, we made our point. That's it. And or is he not leading but being led by some of the more hardline elements who say, oh, it's very nice what you want to do. And of course, we're with you, of course, of course. But we just got a few more laws we want to pass. So does he assert his leadership, his authority? That has been a hallmark of Netanyahu in the past. And now people are wondering if that's still him. Is it a function of his age of 73? Is it a function of the corruption trials that he's been immersed in, that he's distracted? You know, we don't know precisely, but we tend to think if Netanyahu had his druthers, he wouldn't be in the spot he is today. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yet he seems to have gone along with them because he doesn't want his, his government to fall apart. And political survival is seemingly above all. Of course, there's others who say, look, he's not, it's not that he's being led. He's leading. He's just leading in a way you don't want to hear because he has a corruption trial and he's trying to dilute um the authority of the attorney general by making new appointments and but without having any judicial oversight. Yeah. So that's a more nefarious kind of uh, take on him. And we'll have to see as this unfolds, you know, which interpretation is correct. I look forward to continuing the conversation. So thank you, as always, for joining us, David. With all uh, any time, I'm always happy to, to be with you. So thank you for Great. having me.